Hey, this is Krishna and welcome back. It's been a while since I've made a YouTube video, but I thought I'd go ahead and show you my inking and coloring process on this werewolf piece that I penciled using Adobe Photoshop. And in the process of going through this, uh, if you have any questions after you watch the video, please drop me a comment and let me know and I'll do my best to answer. So I start off with making my pencil layer uh, somewhat uh, transparent. I drop the opacity to about 30% and I'm using a custom brush within Photoshop from the True Grit Texture Supply Company uh, to go ahead and um, ink up um, you know my work here. Uh, generally when I ink it's fairly loose. Uh, my pencils are also fairly loose as well. Um, and this is sped up, I think, about um, four times, four or eight times. So what I'm using here to create those straight lines is the Hedge Stylus. And I'll put a comment or I'll put a link in the show notes so that you can download that. It's a really awesome tool for the Mac that lets you create perspective lines. It lets you create grids, etc., ellipses, and so forth. Most of the stuff that you see here I've freehanded, but on occasion I will use um, aligned, um, you know, ruler from head stylus to go ahead and, uh, you know, add some precision. So when I ink, I'm thinking about areas of light and areas of darkness. I'm also thinking about texture. So those are the things that I want to communicate in addition, of course, to the form of the object. And I try to use a brush that gives me variable line width. In other words, uh, lines that taper, lines that get thicker and thinner. And so for things like bottles, I like to show some reflections. And again, you can see I'm using the head stylus over here. It makes short work of creating very straight lines very, very fast. The interface for the head stylus is on a separate display. So you're not able to see what that interface looks like. If there's any interest, I'll definitely make a new video that um, shows how the head stylus works for me. So here with the werewolf, his back is facing us and uh, I'm just drawing all the hair. This is actually uh, inspired by uh, a comic character called The Werewolf by Night by Marvel. I was reading a bunch of old Moon Knight issues and uh, in those particular comics, the werewolf by night figures in, so I thought I'd just go ahead and do something werewolf-like. And I'm just adding areas for shadows. And the way I ink, I have to, I, you know, in order for me to color, I need to make sure that I've closed gaps. And sometimes you'll see the, the um, canvas turn black, it's because I don't have a closed gap, so the color fills in uh, throughout any object that it does, you know, has an open um, line. So if you have a fully enclosed uh, ink um, mark that you've made, then you can fill that in. If you don't, then you will get, the color will bleed into other areas of your composition. Here I'm using the pen tool Pencil is great for precision selections, and what I'm going to do is make a selection for all those areas that I want to fill into black. So I'll use the pen tool, convert that to a selection, and fill it in with black using the Option Backspace or Alt Delete keys on Windows. So I'm also thinking about light source. You know, uh, there's two light sources here, uh, one that is going to be in front of our werewolf and one cast from the lamp that's on the desk. Here I'm adding some little dots for texture. I'm also adding some hatching. So you have to make use of all of those different methods of uh, conveying material. So inking is not just tracing pencils, it's, it is um, a way of adding life and adding a new dimension to your drawings. Uh, what I've done here is I've just filled all the areas that are outside of the drawings. Uh, the red represents the area outside of uh, 
wherever I've done my inks and I've got two separate layers, one for the areas that are not enclosed by objects and the blue area is everything that has the objects. And here I'm using the True Grid Texture Supply halftone patterns. And this is a, a way that I really uh, like, this is like my, my coloring approach. Uh, I like it because it kind of has an old, old school comic sensibility to it. And I'm using the selection tools, uh, namely the lasso tool and the polygon lasso tool uh, to make short work of making the selections and I'm just filling those um, selections in, uh, filling a pattern into those uh, enclosed areas. The True Grit Texture Supply brushes and patterns, they cost a little bit of money. They're not too expensive. They're actually fairly reasonably priced and they're very, very uh, powerful tools. So here I'm selecting the books, I'm using the hue saturation panel to drop the saturation. I want the colors to have more of a muted feel. This is not a bright and cheery composition. This is a you know, kind of a creepy, got a little bit of a horror vibe going on with it. If there's any interest in a future video, if you'd like to see me actually work on a composition from start to finish, where I demonstrate how I come up with my ideas, let me know in the comments below. So here's my light source. I'm using the uh, screen effect for the light source. And I'm creating an, uh, using the polygon lasso tool. I'm creating an opening that resembles a door. I'll flood that in with white. I'm trying to avoid tangents. And now I'm making a selection on the back side of the werewolf, creating some dark values to imply the light source is coming from the front of the werewolf. Here I'm saving my drawing. Sometimes I forget to save until I totally finish the drawing. And an area that is really, really important are these layer effects. You can create some really interesting uh, values when you play with these layer effects. And so here I've used a blue, like a turquoise blue color to give the images a little bit more of a cooler vibe. You know, you got your warm colors and your cool colors. I'm using some cool colors here. And then um, I use a program called a Graphic Converter that keeps track of all my texture files. And I love using watercolor textures and couple that with a layer effect like a screen or an overlay uh, or a multiply. You can get some pretty interesting um, variable textures. Um, and so here we have the final piece. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think. Drop me some comments. And if you like what you see, tell a friend. And you can follow me on uh, Instagram at Krishna Draws. Thanks so much.